All right, I'll be choosing he who can lick can bite. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one thing I did right. I chose my topic right off the bat. You should immediately choose the first option that leaps off your slip of paper, or you're going to waste precious thinking time. After that, I recommend deciding on a thesis, writing down the first five examples that pop to mind, choosing the best three, spending the rest of your time memorizing the order of those examples, and using your last 30 seconds or so settling on an introduction. I should have gotten a haircut. There's no reason to take an unnecessary risk and seem less composed or professional than your competitors because of your hair. With that in mind, let's fast forward to the speech itself. My father is an interesting man, insofar as he isn't the really physically imposing sort. Indeed, he resembles to me something more of a grizzled goat, strutting around in my house and saying, Ew, are you enjoying your schoolwork today? He doesn't have a British accent, but he feels like he does. <laughs> the one thing to understand when analyzing my father is that he's a temperate kind of guy, except when he gets on the phone with some sales representatives. What are you talking about? I can't make a purchase out for my second loan. That's absurd. The important thing to understand about that is that even though he possesses the ability to coddle me, as all good fathers do, taking me down to the movie show for my weekly fare, he also possesses the ability to bite when the stakes get important. Mm -hmm. So let me analyze the French proverb: "He who can lick can bite." Important to understand this through three separate facts of analysis. The first being, quite literally, the character of Chomper, the mighty T-Rex, in the land before time. Second, we can analyze this to a more realistic Chomper, Cujo of Stephen King fame, oh my the rabid dog. And finally, we can talk about this in terms of more of a metaphor, with Charles Gatone, assassin of President Garfield, who <coughs> seemed to look short until he bit our poor president's head off. Metaphor. Here's what the introduction did right. There was a forceful attention-getting device. The theory of primacy and recency says that your audience will remember the first and last things you say in a speech. So, starting off with a strong voice, expressive gestures, fluid delivery, an impression, and a litany of self-aware jokes clearly communicates the tone of the following speech. There was a clear roadmap. Three points. Within that roadmap, I don't just generally say, I'll talk about a movie, a book, and an historical figure, since that's relatively uninteresting. Insert personality into your preview. Smiling is good. Assuming it's appropriate to your content, judges prefer speakers that seem to be enjoying what they're doing over those that are stone-faced and serious. Here's what the introduction did wrong. Too many filler words. I said important three times understand three times, and derivations of the word analyze three times. Too many accents. There was no reason to say, taking me down to the movie show for my weekly fare, or ignite, like I did. If the judge liked quirky, I had already won them over. If they didn't, I had already lost them. But if they were on the fence, as most would be, I was pushing my boundaries. I never explicitly said whether or not I agreed with the quotation. If I had slowed down, cut out a joke or two, and took the sentence necessary to give my take on the topic, the rest of the speech would become clearer. It would also give me the presentational opportunity to show off my range, to demonstrate that I could be a more conversational and calm speaker. Variance is key. What you have to understand in analyzing the character of Chomper is that like any other small T-Rex, he's the friendly kind of guy. He goes towards Littlefoot, Sarah, Ducky, Petrie, and the rest of their Jurassic Rex wings for the sake of fun and merry. The problem is, like all other shark teeth, as they call Tyrannosaurus rexes, he seems to develop very sharp teeth. He develops a craving that causes him to have, in song, Friends for dinner. Which has a hilarious double meaning. <laughs> 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 he wasn't there for dinner, but they think he's going to eat it, which is hilarious because he eventually tries to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand, analyzing Chomper, he's a man who's a little bit of a dick, and he's 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 a little bit of a dick, and he's
what is potential as a dinosaur is such that it should not be entirely disregarded. More Here's what that first point did right. The friends for dinner joke works. There are three levels. The initial singing, which is funny in of itself, the self-aware double-meaning follow-up, which gets an additional wave of laughter, and the mumbled, solemn, qualifying joke, which ties it up. I begin to impact the point out to show how the example connects to the overarching theme of potential. Here's what that first point did wrong. If you don't know what the land before time is, the point never clarifies it. Here's the context it needed. The Land Before Time is a children's cartoon about a group of talking adolescent dinosaurs. One of the characters, a young Tyrannosaurus Rex, is named Chomper. That alone would clear up the confusion. Also, listing the names of the main characters without that context obfuscates the point even more. Chomper never tried to kill the gang. It worked for a cheap laugh, but it could confuse people familiar with the series. Stay truthful to the material. There were too many filler words. I said understand twice, analyze twice, and important once. Over, if this dinosaur in fact in rabies, he would only be half as terrifying as the dog, Cujo, who at one point is a happy family friend serving your nice kind suburban household. The problem with Cujo is he gets rabies. Not just rabies, rabid rabies. In the sense that he tries to attack a family, basically laying siege on them while they remain within their own car, just for the sake of appeasing his animalistic drives. Earlier on, he was quite a nice puppy, like Snoopy or my own dog, Anime, <laughs> named for the man. <laughs> but in understanding the character of Cujo, we have to understand that in society, we often don't realize people in terms of being able to adapt to their fullest potential. And that's the important thing here. After all, it's only a slight push to send somebody teetering over the bridge until flying entirely over that bridge, which was what the case was with Gato. Here's what worked about the second point. Beginning with a transition is good. Too many impromptu words just say, now let's move on to the second point of analysis. Using thematic transitions holds the judge's attention and makes the speech seem more cohesive as a whole. Here's what didn't work so well. The rabid rabies joke didn't do it for me. I was trying to keep the aura of good humor going, but forced inflection and alliteration, they're not automatically funny. This point still needed additional context. For example, Cujo is a horror story written by acclaimed author Stephen King. It focuses on a dog named Cujo. The Snoopy and anime references were a waste of time. To borrow a phrase from Simon Cowell, they were indulgent. At this point, I thought that the judges either loved me or hated me, so I gave a speech I could show to my parents and friends so that we could marvel at the in-jokes. That's risky. I would not recommend doing what I did. Again, filler words. I said understand twice and important once. The impacting here is better than in the first point, but I needed to use the specific language of the quote to take Cujo's transformation uh, and connect it to the thesis. He licked his masters when he was younger, and he bit them once contracting rabies, for example. He was a man who didn't have a lot, and when I say he didn't have a lot, I mean nobody liked him at all. He wanted to become, at first, a pharmacist, then a poet, an author, an actual preacher to the entire masses, and then a musician. When none of this was actually occurred, he decided to become ambassador to France, which works with the French proverb. But the important thing about being ambassador to France is that Garfield said, wait a second, who the hell are you? <laughs> so Gitto shot him. He was only licking, but then he bit the bullet. Because <laughs> he shot him. <laughs> In understanding the potential of the tone, we have to look at those within our own society. The people, the quiet masses who seem to suffer. Whether it's that blonde kid with wide eyes who happens to be giving a speech in front of you and maybe just pushed over the edge if any of you gives him a seven. <laughs> <laughs> now we're on the third point. The references to the quote, which worked with the French proverb, and bit the bullet, are good. Judges appreciate the callbacks. The pauses I take for comedic effect also work, 
which indicates that I should have slowed down elsewhere in the speech. What did this do wrong? There's a nervous laugh before I say the word preacher. Nerves turn judges off. The point needed more historical context. For example, what was happening in America when Garfield was president. This way, if another speaker in the round went hard on history, and the judges thought they were the obvious first rank because of it, I could have gotten a second rank because I also showed historical chops, albeit to a lesser degree. I say important once more, and understand once more. I also say, whether it's that blonde kid, without giving another option. Whether that's improper sentence structure. The give him a seven joke is one hell of a risk. I would never recommend any of you use it. Is that even though Jones is a cartoonist, and you can see that he can analyze the potential in two different ways, that of the time he that goes into the killer, or that's the killer that was always in the thing at the time of the T-Rex. And you can analyze it in terms of the dog who had rabies, and you didn't understand that such a common disease could have been threatened because we were blinded by his cuteness, his love of response, and his snarling fangs, which really should have picked us off. And finally, Clyde <laughs> Trump, who seemed to be the nice premier of society sort, the kind who wouldn't interfere with any president, let alone assassinate them. We wonder where these quiet masses come from, but they come from America. Anybody who can lick can bite as well, but anybody who can bite can lick. We can turn to those who seem to be unrehabilitatable, but they always are in the end. That's why our penal system should be that work to some kind of reformative system to help those in need. So whether you are a dinosaur, or you're finding a dinosaur within yourself, Patrick Burger, or you're any kind of dog, or you are the assassin of President Garfield, I think we can all understand that those who can lick can bite and bite others. Summarizing one's three points is a good idea, but I do it twice, at the start of the conclusion and then at the end. If I only did it at the end, I would have had more time to explain the reformative system versus penal system impact, uh, so I recommend starting a conclusion with the impact on the audience, then moving on to the three-point summary, and then tying everything back to the introduction, which I didn't have time to do. So this was the most structurally incoherent part of the speech. I say analyze three times, and I say understand twice. The Patrick Berger reference is, again, an in-joke, but one I had to make. Patrick was a friend of mine, a national runner-up in policy debate, and he missed out on the final round of this tournament by one point. His speech in semifinals is still one of my favorite speeches ever, so I promised that I'd make a reference to him, and I did. I'm talking too fast near the end because of that reference, though. Ending on a calm and collected note is good. On the whole, I said the words important, understand, and analyze eight times each in this speech. I guess it was important to understand my analysis? I hope this video was helpful for any impromptuers out there. Uh, please leave your comments or questions below, and I promise I'll respond to them. Thank you for your time.